10 News begins with breaking news. We have breaking news right now out of North County. A missing man may be the victim of a crime. I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Virginia Chell. Let's get right to Kalina Estrinos, who has some details in this case from the 10 News Live Center. Kalina? Yeah, so investigators are now looking for this person. Now, San Diego and Riverside County Sheriff's Department are asking the public for help in locating this man. This is Daniel Foster, 29 years old, and he was first reported missing from the Fallbrook area back in March, but his family says they haven't heard from him since February. Officials now say that he may be the victim of a crime or that foul play may be involved. Riverside County joined the investigation after getting tips that he might have been spotted in Anza, which is just about 45 minutes east of Temecula. So make sure you take a good look at this photo. He is described to be 6'3", blonde hair and blue eyes. And if you have any information, you are urged to call the San Diego Sheriff's Department or the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and happening today, drivers might be scraping up some extra change just to pay for gas. Yeah, state lawmakers are voting on the biggest gas tax hike in this state's history. Ten News reporter Mimi Alcala joining us live from City Heights. Mimi, I know the neighbors say the roads are bad there, but they're not sure this is the best way to solve that. Virginia, Jason, that's right. Now, every driver will feel the effects of this if the bill is passed, but I want to direct your attention to this right here. All of these potholes in this damaged street, we've been seeing people hit them all morning long, and of course, we all hate hitting those potholes, but Democratic leaders say in order to fix them, we're going to have to pay more at the pump. Those who live here in City Heights say the roads across the entire county have been bad for just way too long. The plan is to fix the roads, highways, and bridges across California, but it's going to cost drivers about an extra 10 bucks at the pump a month. Governor Brown and Democratic lawmakers right now are pushing for that hike. Here are the three changes you will see if it is passed. A 12 cents per gallon gas tax increase, a rise in vehicle license fees, and an annual $100 fee for zero emissions vehicles. Now, many Republican lawmakers oppose the idea, saying there are other ways to fund the repairs. One woman, Amber Ellis, that we spoke to, works in City Heights. She's still unsure which side that she agrees with. These roads do need some help, so I don't know. It just depends on my wallet, I guess. Local leaders backing the increase say that every city here in San Diego County will get a portion of that money to fix our roads. Now two-thirds of the vote are needed to pass. We will let you know as soon as we have that outcome of this hearing. For now, reporting live in City Heights, Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Happening now, President Trump starting two days of meetings with China's president. Trump hosting the leader at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. Let's take a live look there. The arrival happening right now. There you see the American flag there, the Chinese uh, plane there also in the distance. But uh, the president promised to change the U.S. trade with uh, relationship with China there. The president saying that, quote, China was raping the U.S. economy. So we'll see how things go between the Chinese president and President Trump here in Florida. And a major development for the congressional investigation into Russia and the election, Congressman Devin Nunes stepping down. And ABC Stephanie Ramos has the fallout. Me, because I've been the one who's warning about Russia for a long, long time. You're not going to recuse yourself? No, not. After weeks of digging in and a number of ethics complaints. I sent out a statement and that's my, my statement will stand. Devin Nunes is now removing himself from congressional investigations into Russia's meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Nunes is blaming politically motivated accusations from left wing activist groups. GOP leaders have been standing by Nunes, even though his ongoing participation raised questions of impartiality holding a mystery meeting at the White House with an unknown source that he has still Jeff never Nunes, revealed. You not Your obsession with who talked to whom and when is not the answer. Nunes says he received information showing the Trump team was incidentally caught up in surveillance. The next day, he showed that intelligence to the president instead of the bipartisan committee he runs. Ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee says he'd like to move forward. It will, I think, allow us to have a, a fresh start. But House Speaker Paul Ryan, the man with the power over Nunes chairmanship, was standing by him then and is standing by him now. I know he is eager to demonstrate to the Ethics Committee that he has followed all proper guidelines and laws. In addition to numerous ethics complaints from various organizations, the Senate and House Ethics Committees are now investigating Nunes for possibly obtaining unauthorized classified material during that trip to the White House. In New York, Stephanie Ramos, ABC News. Happening now, a San Diego mother missing for more than a week. And now volunteers are handing out these flyers in the desperate search to find her. 
Debbie Puente was last seen when she was out with friends in Ocean Beach on March 28th. Her car was found yesterday. We spoke to her daughter who lives in Colorado and says her mother has disappeared before, but this time it's different. It's been more than a week now and that's a long time for somebody to be missing. She missed two days straight of work in a row, which was really unusual for her. She's worked at her job for 14 years. Puente is about five foot four, weighs 115 pounds, brown hair and a mole on her cheek. If you know anything, if you've seen her, call San Diego police. A crime alert from 10 News here. A hit and run driver who killed a man in Lincoln Park is still on the loose. A car was speeding down 47th Street there at Salola last night when it hit a man crossing the street. The victim died at the hospital. The driver went east on that same road. Now, police say the car is a gray or white sedan with black rims. It may have some serious damage to the front end, windshield, hood, and headlight. The crash was at 815 last night. Call police if you have any information. Happening now, the trial is underway for the young man charged with a shooting that injured a San Diegan at Northern Arizona University and killed someone else. Scripps reporter Chris Groh shows us the very different arguments about Stephen Jones from the prosecution and the defense. Will it be self-defense or first-degree murder? Both the state and defense beginning to build their separate cases in front of a 14-person jury. Stephen Jones is facing first-degree murder charges and six different aggravated assault charges. He's accused of shooting and killing Colin Brew and wounding three other NAU students after a fight on campus back in 2015. But since then, he's maintained it was self-defense. His attorney laying the framework to jurors that his client was, quote, surrounded, bullied, threatened, and attacked that night. But the state believes Jones acted like an assassin, grabbing his gun from his car and then returning to the scene. Prosecutors said they plan on calling at least 35 witnesses. The trial is expected to go until May. That was Chris Groh reporting. San Diego Nick Prado here who went back to the school for a vigil was shot in the neck on that day in 2015. He was holding on to his friend Colin when Colin died. Prado will be testifying later this month. Storms continue to batter the southeast, causing damage across several states, and now the storms are moving up the east coast. Over the last several days, three dozen tornadoes have been confirmed by meteorologists. Between that and flash flooding, some have been left homeless. I know my house is going to be a total loss because it flooded out. I don't know what's going on. Like I said, we just got to trust in God, you know, and everything going to be all right. Hundreds of flights out of Atlanta were canceled yesterday and many more have been grounded today. Happening now, students are protesting Border Patrol agents on campus at Cal State San Marcos. Ten News reporter Mary McKenzie is there right now. You can see to show us why the agents are there, Mary. It's actually a career fair, Virginia, and these students who are along lining this hallway with signs and pamphlets are here to protest the Border Patrol agents who are here to recruit students for jobs with the agency. Border Patrol agents are all the way at the other end of this job fair. These students here in the hallway say that it sends the wrong message having them on campus. They say that a Border Patrol reality checkpoint reenactment, that's what they call this. It's designed to make other students aware of injustices they say have happened at the hands of Border Patrol agents. Some of the students say their connection to the issue is personal. Other people not wanting to be here, whether that's law enforcement, whether that's the communities, whether that's jobs, whether that's but but here they are working, working hard, so sacrificing their families, leaving their families in Mexico um, to be here to be able to provide for us. Now they are handing out these pamphlets to students who are here as prospective job seekers with a list of what they say are infractions at the hands of Border Patrol agents coming up at 1130. You'll hear what they say they would like to say to those students who seek a job with Border Patrol. We're live at San Marcos, Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Thank you, Mary. Happening now, a motorcyclist who was doing wheelies down Mission Boulevard is recovering from a crash. Look at his bike there in the middle of the street. Police say the rider saw a patrol car took off, trying to thread the needle between two cars stopped at this red light intersection. The rider ended up crashing. Witnesses told us motorcycles are a problem in this area. It's all in PB too. It's always motorcycles in PB. They're always gunning through, splitting lanes, like, it's crazy here. The motorcyclist has a fractured leg. The drivers of the two cars were not hurt. 